uh, for our inaugural ISD uh, sustain Symposium. Now, we're putting this on as part of, uh, kind of Welsh Universities Week, uh, which has been a series of events across Wales. We've, there's been an exhibition in the Senate in Cardiff Bay this week. And uh, within University of Wales, Trinity St. David, Swansea Metropolitan, we've had a number of events. And this is one of those events. Uh, the idea is to, to show the world what universities do and what universities contribute to the economic well-being of our nation. Um, first of all, who are we? Because sometimes it's quite confusing, even for those on the inside. Uh, we're officially the University of Wales, Trinity St. David, Swansea Metropolitan, following our merger with the historic home of Welsh education, uh, the University of Wales, Trinity St. David's, which is the oldest uh, Royal Charter University outside of Oxford and Cambridge, founded in 1828. Um, we have campuses here in Swansea, but also in Lampeter, Carmarthen, branch office in Cardiff, and also in London. Uh, across the city, we're almost a hidden university within Swansea, being embedded within the fabric of the city centre. Uh, we're currently based at Mount Pleasant, uh, up on the, on the left-hand side there, and next year we'll be moving the whole ISD uh, centre into Alex, which is our new design centre being built in the centre of town. And a great example of sustainability because we're taking an 1887 listed building and bringing it back into to new use as a, as a design centre. And adding to it a wonderful new extension, which there'll be a, maybe an insight into this afternoon, to show uh, how you can breathe new life into old buildings and also add sustainability into the mix. Right, and our new Vice Chancellor, Professor Medwin Hughes, um, came up with this statement. Uh, a few days ago. The University of Wales, Trinity St David, is committed to driving growth in Wales through the impact of its research and development activities and its active engagement with industry, employers and entrepreneurs. Now you might think this is old hat, and in many ways it is old hat, because universities have always had engagement with industry and commerce in the, in the life of the nation. But sometimes that can get a bit lost in the day-to-day the -day struggle of dealing with research, uh, the day job of teaching, and uh, and sometimes industry can get marginalised or forgotten about. And so what we sought to do with ISD is to bring that together, bring our research and our knowledge transfer activities together under one heading, uh, the Institute for Sustainable Design. Now we're doing this um, uh, through the help of WEFO. Uh, the project is worth around about 4.7 million over four years. Um, and, and a large chunk of that money is coming from WEFO, uh, but much funded by Swansea Metropolitan and uh, Cardiff Metropolitan University, who are our key strategic partner. Now, what does the ISD aim to do? Well, in our business plan, written about four years ago now, uh, the key thing of sustainability was drafted, embedded into the core plan. Um, so we take that premise of the triple bottom line, uh, i.e. sustainability has to be economically sustainable, environmentally and socially. And you can hear this message reinforced time and time again today. Um, our big challenge within design is to how do you get sustainable design in terms of actually economically sustainable design whilst at the same time trying to boost environmental sustainability. And I'm sure Frank is going to give us some really great insights shortly into on a more strategic level how businesses can benefit from embedding sustainable practice into their workflows and so on. Uh, what we've done between the two universities is to pull together uh, a number of academics and also full-time staff who can commit themselves fully to the task. They're from a business background, a design background, engineering background. Basically a hub of people who are actively engaged in research and advising companies on best practice and helping those companies to apply best practice into their businesses. Uh, the idea is to boost the R&D thinking, particularly in Convergence Wales. But we're not restricted necessarily to that. We do work with businesses outside of Convergence, uh, but our core has to be within Convergence because of our funding model. And key for us as a, as a relatively small university is to boost our knowledge transfer, to get the good ideas which are coming out of the university out into the public space. Um, but IST is nothing if it isn't teamwork. And so uh, I love this picture because uh, this reminds me of trying to get my, my, my children to ride their bikes. Um, it's all about teamwork, people working in partnership with each other, uh, whether that's the university working with individual businesses, 
uh, whether that's uh, university working with other institutions or funded projects. And it's good today to have uh, Owen Bailey on the panel, for example, this afternoon from Business Innovation and Design uh, as part of that collaboration. Uh, we have Dr. Ainur Young from uh, Bangor University also giving a presentation later, showing part of that, hopefully, that communication and that partnership with other organisations within Wales. Um, I love this quote by William McDonough. The Stone Age did not end because humans ran out of stones. It ended because it was about time for a rethink about how we live. And I love that. You know, sometimes when we, we talk to people about sustainability, there's, uh, you know, there's actually a lot of hostility and resistance uh, in many quarters because they don't actually see, see the need at this moment in time. But the need is coming. And the need is growing. Whether it's sustainability in terms of our natural resources or even our human resources, it's a, there's a time bomb ticking. And so we need to react to that. Some of the key documents which have shaped the way we operate with ISD are things like our common future or the Brentland Report from 87, uh, a book by Tony Fry, who is a British but kind of Australian based uh, academic, defuturing, how we by our very actions today take away the future flexibility and options of, of the next generation and how in fact our ways of thinking today have been shaped by what people did in the past so that what we think is normal and the way it is is actually artificial in many ways. And the blue economy, uh, Gunter Pauli's um, whole philosophy and approach uh, largely based upon ideas of things like biomimicry, how you can look to nature to uh, develop and evolve new ways of approaching economic development. Um, this is the, the default standard quote, isn't it, about sustainable development. Uh, sustainable development is a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And again, I'm sure that's going to be reinforced throughout the day. Um, and sometimes we forget, you know, our actions today do take away the inheritance of future generations. Um, but the other word in our mix today is design. And so what is the, how can design impact upon these issues. Uh, what actually power does design have anyway? Well, design is recognised um, commercially and also amongst in government circles. And I've used a, a UK minister's quote here uh, from David Willits, uh, Minister for Universities and Science, who said in 2011, design can help organisations transform their performance from business product innovation to the commercialisation of science and the delivery of public services. And uh, I know our colleagues, at, for example, at Cardiff Met have been party to a, a report on, on the impact and benefits of, uh, of design to delivering better public services, for example. So design is recognised at the highest levels of government as being of major benefit in terms of transforming our society. So you combine design with sustainability and you start to have a, kind of a, a, a clear perspective of the power of design to change things for good. Um, I've used this image many times before, but I think it stands the test of time. I, I, I like the image, so I'm going to use it anyway. Um, these two axes represent, on the vertical, where the emphasis is on um, technical function. The top of the scale, technical function is really important. Bottom of the scale is not, not so important. The horizontal axis represents emotion and symbolism and meaning and values. On the right, it's really important. On the left, not so important, arguably. And art typically would be down here, really driven by the emotions and the, uh, and the symbolism. Engineering typically would be seen as being up here. Uh, business, apologies for any business people here, could be, doesn't matter if it functions or if it uh, feels good, as long as it makes money. And uh, where does design fit then? Well, I think design fits there. It bridges the gap between art and engineering. Uh, we've got a new building coming on stream next year, and above the door, carved into stone, it says the schools of science and art. A Victorian building built to uh, help drive um, innovation in this region. But those words still stand the test of time. But actually, even though I've taken the mickey out of business then, design without the business is empty. And so we have to have that three-way partnership, the creativity, the technical function, and also the economic viability to make design effective. Um, I'm not into tweeting myself, but uh, Leighton Andrews, when he came to see us uh, uh, a while ago, uh, tweeted, was impressed with Swansea Met design engineering and industry linkages. And so we are making a few waves uh, as within our partnership. Um, the value of design, everybody's familiar with this gentleman, uh, Sir Jonathan Ive, 
And I, I think this is a great example. We use him as a great icon in terms of promoting the, the impact and the benefits of design to people. Um, since he took over as Vice President of Design at Apple, it's had a transformational effect on the company. Yes, the late Steve Jobs had, uh, was, was the driving force, but, but without, um, without the, the creative acumen of John Knife, Apple wouldn't be the Apple we know today. And yes, I know those who are, um, would be screaming now internally about uh, Apple's environmental footprint and the damage they do, uh, the fact that they built this massive complex in North Carolina, which is powered by coal-fired power stations, isn't good for the environment. Uh, but I think, in fairness to them, they are trying to um, offset that with a solar array power station. But, you know, everybody thinks that uh, kind of cloud computing and this things in the ether have no cost to the environment. Well, they do, because you need energy and power. So, but, it, but this represents maybe the challenge of trying to do both, trying to have economic development with, um, with environmental sensitivity. Um, I, again, I love this quote by Steve Jobs. I have used it before. Uh, when you start looking at a problem and it seems really simple, you really don't understand the complexity of the problem. We've all been there. Then you see into the problem, or you get into the problem, and you see that it's really complicated. And you come up with all these convoluted solutions, and we you know, tie ourselves in knots trying to find these amazing solutions. And then people normally stop there with a solution which is often unworkable, unsustainable in itself, what Tony Fry would, would call, you know, we, we end up trying to sustain the unsustainable. So Steve Jobs goes on to say, but the really great person will keep on going and find the key, the underlying principle of the problem and come up with an elegant, really beautiful solution that works. And that has to be sustainable in every sense of the word if it's to really work. So green design, is that a simple solution? Um, I love these images, it usually gives, brings a smile. Is this green car design, for example? Obviously not. Uh, it's more complicated. Example, you know, we did a project a few years ago where um, we looked at kind of lightweight vehicles. I mean, the key to success um, within the automobile area of reducing energy consumption is actually about lightweight vehicles. We can't uninvent the vehicle, the car. But what we can do is make it more efficient, lightweight, and use uh, composite materials to, to, take the, to take the bulk out of the vehicle. And so we've been doing some work over the last few years in terms of looking at how you can make cars more efficient and therefore more environmentally friendly. Um, how do we do that within ISD? I'm not going to go through the whole diagram, this is on our website. But we have a stage-by-stage -stage engagement through ISD. And we do that in, within partnership as well. We put in uh, business sense there because the partnership with, uh, with INA's team at, uh, at Banga in terms of doing environmental audits of companies that come through ISD. I put in NT CADCAM because, again, a strategic partner with us in terms of supporting our delivery of, of, of CAD and, and RP uh, to, to Welsh businesses. So the idea that you can, come and, you can come and try things out and see the benefits for yourself. And Peter will talk at length about uh, the, uh, the impact and power of sustainability modelling within the software, for example. So it is a process. It's all about partnership. And uh, no, we're not alone. We've got... Um, 50% of our design advisors are, uh, work out of Cardiff Metropolitan University, working within PDR uh, under Gavin Kaywood. And so we have uh, a really good partnership with Vanga, really good partnership with, Card uh, with Cardiff Met, and a really good partnership with, with business. And so it allows us to go beyond the mere sketch and drawing aspect of design into things which are you know, really of benefit and impact to society and the economy of Wales. And you know, we've built up a relationship with a whole range of companies over the years. Um, but in these last few years, the focus has been very much on small, medium-sized enterprises, startups, companies which uh, have a real foothold in Wales and looked, uh, looking to build the Welsh economy. And our future, well, from next year, we'll be moving into this new building. Again, I'm putting it up because, to me, it symbolises what IST is about. It's taking maybe the best of the old, I, the Universities of Wales, and trying to bring them together with something new in a new way. Is it easy? No. This building was meant to be finished in August. It's now going to be finished in Easter 2014. All right, so trying to do something different isn't easy. Um, it can be a tortuous process to get it to fruition. I hope ISD isn't too tortuous, and I hope today isn't too long, and I hope the process today is rewarding. So thank you for your attention. Welcome to our conference, and uh, I really hope you look forward to hearing the rest of the speakers. Um, I'll ask Tyra now to...
take over. Thank you very much.